Hey all, your OS reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the New Yes Scan Reader. This is a smart translation pen, which means you can scan documents and books to translate. You can also use voice translations as well. It has up to 55 languages which it can translate offline using the text scanning. If you are linked via Wi-Fi, that number expands to over 112 languages. Here is the packaging, pretty simple. And on the inside we have of course the translation pen itself that we'll take a closer look at in a moment with other contents including a quick user guide as well as a USB Type-C charging cable. I will mention that this is technically their third generation smart translation pen, and over three iterations they've just slightly improved things like supporting more offline languages, as well as now having a both left-handed and right-handed mode. The touchscreen here on the front measures 3 inches diagonally, quad-core processor with 1 gig of RAM along with 8 gigs of built-in storage, and that memory again can also be used to store music and files as well. This, I will mention, is also not the first time that we've seen a smart translator in the style of a pen, although that model was a noticeably larger unit by comparison. I'm actually quite surprised by how thin the new S version is. And at the end of the day, I do think that slimmer is better because if you're using it like a pen and holding it, it just feels a little bit more ergonomic. Some other differences here being that the newest scan reader has a aluminum alloy build, so the entire body here is made out of metal as opposed to plastic like we saw on the other version, so it definitely feels a little bit more premium in terms of the craftsmanship as well. But in terms of the functionality and how it operates, it's exactly the same which is then able to identify the text as you're scanning it onto a paper or document. It also is illuminated, or assisted I should say, by two LED flash. The front here is pretty glossy, so it's a little bit of a fingerprint magnet, but we also have on the spine access to a power key and a volume rocker, but very interestingly, this volume rocker is also used in the voice translation mode, where you would tap on one key to speak in your language, and the other person would tap on the second button to speak in the other language, and there are noise cancellation microphones on the top as well, so you can hold it like this to uh, go back and forth with the voice translation if you desire. In this regard, I do think that this design maybe wasn't quite as good as the previous model, which had separate keys on the front that were a little bit easier to distinguish. Otherwise, there is the loudspeaker on the back, and that is pretty much it. There is no 35 millimeter headphone jack, um, so if you want to connect them also to headphones, you can choose Bluetooth, uh, although there is that Type-C port on the edge there. So I know some of you guys might be wondering, well, uh, what's the difference with something like this, a dedicated smart AI translator versus, say, our smartphones and using Google Translate? Well, truth be told, for casual users, it probably wouldn't make sense to pick up a dedicated device. But if you are someone that is constantly doing translation work, having something like this, which is independent, has a longer battery life, and again, that offline mode, where if you're severed from the internet, can still handle itself, are all good selling points. Now, if we do tap on settings, we can access a few of the other things, like connect to Bluetooth for wireless headphones, and also set up Wi-Fi. And this is a good opportunity to take a closer look at the keyboard as well, which is also customized to work a little bit better on a tiny screen. So if I tap on one here, that's what it looks like. Again, you won't really be typing out too much things on here, um, but um, they just made the keys a little bit larger, not in the QWERTY layout, just to make them a bit easier to trigger and hit, including the accent of the person that is reading things back out loud to you. And you can also swipe on the edge of the screen here to go back by one page. So this gesture is pretty similar to on our modern day Android phones, which is tap like this and you will go back by one menu and we can select the language here by going in and toggling through some of the other options including Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Italian, so on and so forth. So doing a quick demo let's actually start to press down and it will start to kind of recognize the text as you can see there online test and overall again the recognition is not bad right now we're selected English so if you scan any English text it will then just pop up on there, but if you go a little bit too fast, it can still occasionally maybe miss out on some of the punctuation. So if you go at a more reasonable speed, it tends to be a little more accurate. 
So as you can see there, it actually did a very good job in terms of scanning in pretty complex sentences. So if you're doing things from a book or a larger document, you can rest assured that it tries to capture punctuation as well. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but very good for just the pen that you're just dashing along the paper. You can then tap on the OK sign and it will save it as basically a memo. Uh, later on, you can then connect it by USB cable to your computer and it will save it. Now, if we want to actually do the translation capabilities, we can do that just by tapping on the text translation. We can select two languages and let's try saving it into English as the translated language. This is now done and we can basically begin just by scanning and just pressing down on the pen tip here. Again, the light will also automatically turn on as long as your text is centered on this little level icon. I'm just going to scan it. Once again, it will recognize the content and after a split Solo second, it will read it back out loud. So actually in the Spanish, it read it first and then we see the translated in English. I only ask God here down below. And you can also feel free to favorite and save this translation if you want to reference it again in the future. So that works um, actually pretty well. The touch targets can be a little bit small at first, but overall, responsiveness isn't bad. And overall, the accuracy of the online translations do tend to be a little bit better than the offline mode anyways, uh, just because it's able to leverage more of the cloud engines like Google Translate and handle more complex things like syntax, as well as just improvements in natural language processing, which are still continuing to occur right in front of our eyes. It's not perfect, but the accuracy here is indeed about 90 or so percent, I would say, in terms of getting the actual sentiment of what you're trying to say at least translated, even though it may not necessarily catch all of the local jargon. It can still sound at times robotic, like you're not necessarily a exact local, but people can still understand what you're trying to say. So let's try scanning a single word and see how it does, and usually it's just fine. It takes just a split second again for it to recognize. And afterwards, again, the overall definitions, accuracy, all seem to be just fine. And again, not bad at all in terms of if you're using it as a learning tool to very quickly scan without even typing anything. It can all be done here um, with this pen. Let's jump back into the main menu again. And next functionality is going to be phonetic translation. That's just spoken translation. Hello, this is a test of the translation. And it will then... It will then speak that back out. So actually pretty good in terms of the speed and I found the reception quality generally to be pretty good as well if you're in the Wi-Fi mode. Here's a test of a more complex sentence. Is it going to recognize what I'm saying? Let's hope that the accuracy will be all right. All right, so in that case, some of the words maybe were a little bit off there. For accuracy, maybe I paused too much, but you get the idea. Overall, definitely not bad in terms of the processing speed and being able to then churn out the translation, and someone else will be able to then take a closer look at the screen or hear it being spoken out and uh, kind of then have a communication back and forth with you. They would just need to press on the bottom key to talk in their own native language. Um, next function here, for Walkman, that's basically the MP3 player. Very basic. I don't think a lot of people might necessarily use it exclusively as a music player, but in this case, you can do that, load back some music. Although, again, you have to use Bluetooth for listening it to a back or using the built in speaker. Um, otherwise, we also have just a dedicated voice recording mode, which is also pretty handy. So, using the microphones, you can do some quick voice memos. Another test of the voice memos, pretty basic function, but still nice to have, and you can tap here just to listen to it back. Another test of the voice memos to see what the quality of the mics are like, and it's not shabby, it's not actually pretty good in terms of the overall, uh, I have to say, clarity of the microphones and the speaker are both quite good. You can definitely still hear what's going on without too many problems there. Next over here, we have the dictionary. So instead of scanning and uh, doing an entire sentence, you can look up the definition of single words, which is also pretty fun. So right now it supports only Chinese to English and English to Chinese. So this is a little bit limited. So I do wish that this functionality could be maybe expanded on in the future. It's definitely a pretty useful one. I would imagine for learning things and a pretty interactive way to uh, look at what you're reading and seeing. So in this case, it's good morning and it read it back out loud to us. Also breaking it apart by character by character. 
and uh, this means early, so we also can see additional again definitions for this and usage, but it's a little bit inconsistent. So in this yeah. case, it looks like everything is still being spoken back in Chinese. So maybe this function would only really make sense if you are a Chinese speaker. Uh, but again, a dictionary function, and then under favorites, again, all of the things that we had previously highlighted, either words and sentences, and that's pretty much it. So there's no other capabilities, even though it's running on Android, there's no browser or YouTube app, unless you're doing some crazier routing or hacking of your own. Uh, so just very simplified, just to give you the core essentials dedicated to translation, which it still keeps up with. And in terms of smart translators, this is pretty much similar to other models we've seen in terms of accuracy and performance. And it does come in handy definitely if you're someone that is constantly traveling or in contact with other foreign languages and trying to learn things. It can be quite useful to have something like this. Uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily more accurate than the other models that we've seen previously, but definitely not bad. So anyways, you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the scan reader 